My name is Mark. Um, I just started working on uh, scale models uh, recently, um, and I'm attempting to, uh, this will be my second attempt to uh, light one. I did the uh, TOS Enterprise 350 scale model, and I lit that up by myself, and it came out pretty well. I was relatively happy with it. I just recently picked up the Bandai Imperial Star Destroyer, and I decided to try using fiber optics uh, to light it because there's a million uh, little portholes and uh, I didn't think uh, using standard LEDs would uh, you know would really help me here. Uh, so I picked up uh, a roll of uh, fiber optic from Model Train Software and uh, I went looking on YouTube and the internet but I never really could find uh, you know, a very good video um, on how to actually do it. So after a little bit of trial and error on the Star Destroyer, I came up with this method, and I thought since I couldn't find one of my own, uh, I'll make a video and hopefully this will help someone out. Uh, right now I've got, I would recommend that you get one of these little uh, hands-free little things. You can get them from Harbor Freight or online, they're pretty cheap. And what I did was I stuck uh, the piece that I'm uh, putting the fiber optic in so it frees my hands into the little, into the little grips. Uh, this one just came out, uh, but uh, other, other than that, I've got a little stand uh, light here. So it bounces the light off of a white paper towel, so I'm looking down, and you probably can't see it through my video here, but it, I can really see the light bouncing back and it shows me where the little light, uh, the little portholes are. Um, I've completely painted and finished off uh, the model because um, it, it taught me on the Enterprise build um, the paint got over the, uh, the lights when I uh, did the lights first. Um, and I have a little pin vise here that if uh, any of the paint uh, clogs, you know, prevents the little fiber optics going, going through, it just takes a second or two to, uh, to unblock it. So I prefer doing it that way. Uh, again, let me state this is how I came up with, this is little my little system. I didn't see anyone else doing it. So if you have a better way of, uh, of handling it, that would be great. Uh, another thing that you would de need is a small little needle nose, little pliers, uh, again, the little pin vise, and I got some tester super glue. Um, it spo it's supposed to clear, uh, cure in seconds, and what I do is I use that to secure the fiber optic strands in place. The next thing you'll need is, a str is uh, some fiber optics appropriate for the model that you're that you're doing. I got mine from uh, uh, the fiber optic uh, store. I think I said the model train software before, but it's actually the the, the fiber optic store. Um, this is a point I believe a 2, 0.25 strand because uh, the little portholes on the Imperial Star Destroyer are very very small, and uh, so they they fit in perfectly. And what I do is I just use, I just have a little, uh, a little uh, stirring stick here, and I just measure out uh, a length of fiber optic. As you can see, I've already, I've already cut it here. Um, uh, and basically what I do is I take the little, let's see if I can do this with one hand, is I take... So I take a little bit of the strand in the, in the tweezers and bend it into a 90 degree angle. Hopefully you can see that. And then what I do, and then what I do, I just then stick it in the little model here. And I use the tester's glue on a little on uh, the tester's glue and I just glue that into place. Um, I don't do it for every single strand. Um, when I get a couple in there and I 
see that uh, the strands are starting to get in my way or one might pop out. That's where I put the uh, that super setting uh, uh, super glue in. You can also get uh, this little Bob Smith uh, Instaset spray uh, from your hobby store and that causes CA glue to set really quickly. But uh, I found with this tester's glue that it sets within a couple of seconds uh, and then I could just keep moving on and then I just work from left to right because I'm I'm right-handed and uh, I just move across and when I get to the end everything is is uh, sealed and then I just take this off of the uh, the hands free with the little with the little pair of scissors or or the model uh, cutters and just cut off the uh, the stuff that's sticking out the front and that's basically all there is to it and then basically what once you're done uh, this isn't the piece I was working on but this is a prior one um, I clipped all the uh, peak all the, the fiber optics that were sticking out of the front uh, down as close as I could wrapped everything up in some electrical tape took an LED uh, bulb and took a little of uh, the heat shrink that you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot used a little match and uh, basically just heated uh, the, the shrink shrink tube up so the fiber optics are stuck in there and you can see the, uh, the thing sticking out so that's basically the process um, Here's the piece I was working on, and I just ran out of fiber optics, so I have to get some more. Um, but everything's in there. Every couple of portholes, I stuck in some of that uh, quick-acting tester super glue, uh, and then gave it a spritz of the the quick set, and uh, that prevents everything from bouncing. You know, the the fiber optics from bouncing out uh, when you bend it in the uh, and the needle nose pliers at uh, 90 degrees um, that helps it stay in place and if it's bouncing out on you that's when you should uh, glue everything back together again plus working uh, left to right uh, if you're a righty uh, helps things so uh, that's about the process if you, again if you have any uh, different ways of doing it um, let me know but this is the best way that I found for doing it fairly quickly and once you get a little rhythm, you know, they go in fairly, fairly quickly.